wheel is spinning. Okay, we're live. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to see if we can share this. Last time we had that issue with the sharing, and I'm just going to see if we can share this out. We can share it out. It's out there now. Um, yeah. Sharing is caring. So, Scott, if you want to share, they all they all look at this um, because the beginning is this. It's always us on the phones going like this, but that's okay. Um, hi, everybody. Well, Welcome to what? Huh? I'll start working on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is very conversational, as you can tell. Um, hi, everybody. Welcome to The Gear You Hear. This is episode number three. three. Yeah, episode three. Um, and we are very, very pleased to have David Packhaus of Singular Sound here. He's the inventor of uh, the Beat Buddy, which we're gonna get into before uh, before Scott introduces David and all of the amazing, wonderful um, musical technological advances that he's made, created and developed. Um, I wanna go through a couple of the house rules, which if you guys are joining us regularly, you know already, but for those of you that are new um, or who are watching this uh, on the archive, the gear you hear is basically an educational music show to promote um, music technology and creativity and your setup. And so we talk about all things music here. We don't talk politics. We don't talk religion. We don't sexually harass. We actually we don't harass anybody. Uh, no bullying, um, no trolling, because trolling is just classless. And if you troll, as y'all know, I'm a one strike, you're out kind of gal. So if you troll, we will read out your comment aloud, maybe in unison, we'll read out your name and we will bounce you out of here um, and you will never come back. It's kind of that simple. Um, there are no stupid questions. If you have questions uh, for David regarding the Beat Buddy or anything else that Singular Sound makes, um, this is the place to ask them. If you're watching this on the archive and you ask them later, that's fine. We'll make sure that he gets them. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Scott the Pedal Guy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you today? Uh, thank you for that, uh, for the rundown of the rules, yeah. <laughs> as always. Uh, so I am very pleased to have, uh, we're both very pleased to have uh, David Packhouse with us today, um, from the founder and uh, CEO of Singular Sound. Um, it is very rare in this industry when we look at pedals and we look at all of the technology to find something that's truly unique and different and innovative. Uh, and I think David has really uh, mastered the formula. And I thought that today would be a really good opportunity to sit down with him and start uh, talking about how he conceived the idea and brought it to market and all that fun stuff. So if you're into the, into the whole thing of being an entrepreneur, an innovator and all that stuff, this is probably going to be a very interesting conversation. Um, as you know, we are very big fans of the Beat Buddy here at the Pedal Guy. And I do, heavy coat music too. Ah, there you go. I do remarkably well with these right now. Uh, I'm driving the supplier crazy with reorders all the time. So uh, that's that's a good problem to have, and I'm I'm proud to have that problem. And uh, uh, in any case, uh, David, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, My pleasure. I think, I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation. And by the way, we are watching this on. You can watch this right now, uh, uh, both on Facebook Live and on YouTube, on the Pedal Guy YouTube channel. So it's on both. Um, so ask your questions wherever you may, because uh, I'm watching both of them. So Emiko right. will if probably handle stop. StreamYard and I'll handle YouTube and we'll go from there. Right, and I'm monitoring, I shared it on my Facebook page. So if you guys see me go like this, it's because I'm, <laughs> I'm watching it on the phone over here. Anyway, without further ado, Questions, Scott. I know you have questions. I have questions. Want to want to want to start? Uh, sure. Well, David, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Very very jazzed to have you. Um, so let's just start right at the you know the beginning. So how how did you come up with the idea of the Beat Buddy? Right. So the Beat Buddy uh, was our first product at. Singular sound. I'm doing it the other way. Singular <laughs> sound. There we go. <laughs> the camera rever reverses things. Uh, so yeah, the Beat Buddy was was our first product, and uh, you know, since then we've come out with uh, several other products that you've made some videos about uh, that I that we'll talk about later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, but the first product uh, 
uh, the Beat Buddy, the way I came up with it was uh, it's an interesting story. Um, I don't know, you know, you know what what uh, the uh, your audience knows about my background, but uh, I had an interesting uh, previous life before I got into the music business. I was uh, I was an international arms dealer, and yep. uh, they they made a, a Hollywood movie about it called War Dogs. Um, you can check it out. I think it's on Netflix now. Good I've movie. Good movie, though I may be a little biased. <laughs> well, you had a cameo in that. So. Yeah, I did. I did, and I'm I'm playing guitar in the cameo. So oh, uh, there you go. Yeah, I, I'm uh, singing uh, "Don't Fear the Reaper" to a room full of 90 year old people. So that, <laughs> nice. that was you know, okay. It wasn't uh, for the record. It wasn't my idea. You know, it was uh, the director's <laughs> idea. You know, I I wanted to do one of my original songs. You know, I thought that would have been cooler for me personally, but they were sure. like, no, you either play this song or you're, or you're not playing at all. So that was, that was the choice I was given. But, um, so yeah, uh, at, you know, um, at the end of the whole arms dealing, uh, uh, saga, I guess you could call it, uh, I ended up, um, I got into some legal trouble and I ended up getting uh, sentenced to seven months of house arrest, which, uh, which these days I guess is just life, right? You know? <laughs> Uh, but back then, it, it seemed to be a big deal to be stuck in the house for seven months. But um, I couldn't play with any musicians. I couldn't, you know, especially drummers. I mean, I could have friends visit me, but no drummer I knew was going to bring over a drum set. So I couldn't play with any drummers. So I bought a, a drum machine, you know, one of those tabletop drums. Uh, you know, drum machines that people generally buy to create beats. And um, I was using that to make some beats and to, you know, play along with it. But every time I wanted, you know, like as a singer songwriter, when you go from like verse to chorus, for example, the beat changes. And, right. you, you know, it's, it's really lame if it doesn't change, you know, as the energy of the song changes. So I, with a, with a regular drum machine, I'd have to you know, pause my guitar playing, press the button on the machine to change the pattern and go back to playing my my guitar. And it was just, you know, interrupted the rhythm. So I thought, man, I, I really wish there were, you know, because I'm a guitarist, so I know guitar pedals. I wish there was a drum machine in a guitar pedal so I could use it hands free. And I was sure someone was already making it. So I went online trying to find it and couldn't find it anywhere. And uh, I asked my musician buddies, you know, if they'd seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. They hadn't, but they all wanted one too. So I thought if nobody's making it and everyone wants it, then that's a real opportunity. Uh, I never had created any gear in my life. Uh, you know, the, my arms dealing career was uh, pretty much a brokerage kind of thing where you buy from one person, sell to another, uh, you know, uh, make a profit in between. Uh, sure. But you know, it wasn't like creating anything, uh, you know, from scratch. So I didn't know how to do it. So I had a lot of time on my hands being under house arrest. Right. And um, I started Googling about developing electronic products. And I found a bunch of, uh, um, you know, companies that, uh, you know, were able to do it. To make a very long story short, I had a few, uh, you know, made a few bad decisions along the way that ended up uh, had to switch out people who didn't know what they were doing to find people who did know what they were doing. And so that made the entire development process of the Beat Buddy extend out to three years. Um, wow. But at the end of three years in uh, 2014, I had a fully functional prototype. Uh, I did, but I didn't have any money to do manufacturing. So I, uh, so I started a crowdfunding campaign, you know, uh, um, on Indiegogo, it's similar to Kickstarter, mm -hmm. where you know people would uh, uh, donate money uh, in advance to get the gear, and they got a discount, and that became a huge success. Uh, we raised uh, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in a month, so th that was like a record-breaking crowdfunding campaign because people really wanted it. They saw the value of the Beat Buddy of a simple, hands-free drum machine that sounds good as well, and. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's why we did really well with it. Um, and our first uh, units we delivered at the end of 2014. We won practically every major award, gear award in the industry since then. Uh, it did, and it's been doing really, really well. And uh, we've continued to build uh, with uh, with our other products. So that's how that's the 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 summarized story of the Beat Buddy. <laughs> that, that's really awesome. Um, 
I was honestly, David, I didn't know if we could even talk about your past experience at all because I didn't want to open that can of worms if uh, that wasn't. Uh, it's all Googleable, you know. You can't. Yeah, hide. I know. It's on your. It's on your actual site. So I mean, you know, yeah, people could pretty I, much figure I'm it not, out. You know, I mean, I definitely will be the first one to say I've made you know mistakes in my previous life. Sure. Uh, but um, I think that that you know people make mistakes, and you could move beyond that, and and you know you everyone has lives many, many lives throughout their lives, and you're not the same person you were in the past. So you know everyone always has an opportunity to start their life anew, and and I really embrace that uh, with the opportunity that the Beat Buddy gave me uh, mm -hmm. to create gear that you know I was passionate about. I was never actually you know passionate about guns. I was just trying to make money. I was sure. passionate about making money, you know, as an entrepreneur, but, uh, but I didn't really, I, I wasn't, you know, passionate about the actual uh, substance of the business. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm extremely grateful that I've been able to merge these two uh, uh, aspects of my life. You know, my passion for music, which I've always had ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. uh, I learned to play guitar from my mother and, you know, she's an amazing singer. So we sing in harmony together. And that's like been always a very bonding thing for myself and, and my mother. And, um, and I've always loved music. So being able to make a career uh, professionally in the music space is, is it's always been a dream of mine and I never actually thought it would happen. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm eternally grateful for uh, the very unusual path that my life has taken me because I'm here now and that's what counts. Well, that's certainly one that I would call unique for sure. Um, <laughs> well, it, it's <laughs> a there. Yeah. I mean, it's a testament to the fact that not to compare your experience at all with yeah. what the world is going through now, but there are so many people, I think the three of us can agree that we all have at least a couple of friends mm -hmm. who sit at home in this quarantine and they bitch about how there's no opportunity, there's no nothing, mm -hmm. everything's shut down, right? Everything's negative, negative, negative. Right. In fact, if you're lucky enough not to be ill, if you have your health, if you have yeah. your wits about you, you've really been given the gift of time. And that actually, isn't. I find your story to be extremely, not just inspiring, but motivating in the sense that if you have the time mm -hmm. and you have the brain, sure. then go. there's no reason for you not to release an album, not to do a music video, not to do all the things that you wanted to do. But maybe that pesky little day job got in your way or maybe right. there were other things that you had to go out into the world for. Mm -hmm. And you know, if David can come up with the Beat Buddy and all of these other amazing um, pieces of gear, then there's zero reason for anybody to be sitting on their butt saying they can't do anything. And any and further, I would say this, like the Beat Buddy is great for aiding and creation of music, not just in the performance. So yep, exactly. if you, we're, we're offering you guys the tools to go create faster. Mm -hmm. So right, that's the other that's the other part of it. So I think that Absolutely. you're given the gift of time. It's something that you're you're living proof that um, that something really wonderful and productive comes out of it. Right? That, that really is life changing for a lot of people in that in that respect. Yeah, um, and it's 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 amazing to see you know because we very rarely see those kinds of innovations and you know moments like that happen very infrequently especially in pedals because you know the lord you know lord knows we need another overdrive like we need a hole in the head <laughs> um but when you see something that just so, seems so blatantly obvious like why mm -hmm. wasn't this out I, I had to say a very similar yeah. conversation with the guy who developed the stomp light you know mm -hmm. he want, it's a lighting yeah. rig on it and a guitar pedal i know and he, and he was yeah and he's a you know mike mike ahern is mm -hmm. a great guy and um it was like why didn't somebody think of that before? It's yeah. like, yeah, drum machines have been around since the seventies for Christ's sake. Yeah. Right? So we say, yeah, let, let's put it in a pedal. Let's put yeah. this in a pedal and just make it, you know, a songwriting tool. And uh, I think maybe it was just sign of the times, you know, people were so caught up in, in doing everything on a computer and in a DAW. Mm -hmm. And in the last, what, 10, 11 years, there's been like a real movement back towards analog in a way, right. or just back towards tactile. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so that's been, that's been kind of a, uh, an interesting thing to watch. So, uh, yeah. if I may, um, so, you know, when, how did you go about developing mm -hmm. the idea? Cause you had the idea, you had the ideation, then how did you take it from that to the, and you had the funding. Sure. You know, how did you then like go and say, okay, we're going to run down the list. This is a product. This is a feature I want. This is one I want. This is one I want, but this right. is what we can actually do. 
Right. So, um, so yeah, I wasn't sure in, in giving my synopsis, I wasn't sure how many details you wanted me to get into, but since oh, you asked. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Oh, yeah. About. Okay. He's got, I don't know what's in that bottle, but uh, <laughs> he's <laughs> Coca-Cola keeps me awake. There you go. That works. Um, so, so the, the initial idea I had just jamming on my own, you know, I was just playing guitar and, uh, you know, with that drum machine, you know, on the desk next to me and like trying to make it work, you know, like I was trying to use my toe to press the button on the machine, you know, it was like, it was just, it was such a mess. And, and I just started thinking to myself, you know, like, what do I want as a singer songwriter, as a, you know, I'm mainly a rhythm guitarist, uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, you know, as a singer songwriter, if I was going to perform live, uh, you know, or even just want to write a song, what functions of the drum machine do I need, uh, you know, in to use hands free? Mm -hmm. And that's when I had the idea, you know, that, uh, um, you know, well, if you have one pedal, right, you're kind of limited to, to certain interactions with that pedal you could tap the pedal right mm -hmm. and some pedals use like a double tap you know like for like some one pedal loopers do a double tap to stop so i figured well people are kind of used to that and uh the other command you could use with a single pedal is, is a press is a hold uh so i thought well what would work what functions should i assign to those different options and uh, I thought, well, you know, if you're like in the moment, you want to throw in a drum fill, that would be super cool. So if I just tap the pedal, throws in a drum fill, that's that would be really awesome. People are already used to double tapping to stop on single pedal loopers, so I could keep that. And um, and the hold, it kind of sounds like a like a transition. If you want to go from verse to chorus, you could mm -hmm. hold the pedal down, and because it's a hold command, you could also extend the transition. So. Here I got I got my uh, handy beat buddy right here. Here, let me. Oh, hey. So you know to to start it, you know does the little intro fill. I'm not I don't have the sound plugged in, but to do a single tap, you know does the fill. And if you want to do a hold, you could hold it down to do a transition. You see it says transition. You could right. also keep on holding it down as long as you want to extend that transition. When you let go, it goes to the second pattern to like to the chorus. And of course, when you want to end it, you just double tap it and it's an outro fill. Right. So, so I thought that th that was the the core of the of the functionality. Then, of course, you know you need your you know your tempo knob, right? Well, I think I'm, I keep on getting confused with the direction of this. There you go. <laughs> so you got, you got, oh, there it is. The tempo knob. You need that. And then I had the idea. Oh, it would be really neat to be able to change up the drum set. You know, like mm -hmm. you have. Like to be able to go from, you know, like a regular drum set to like hand percussion or to an electronic drum set that would really just give you kind of like a whole palette of sounds, you know, kind of like a like a painter uses different colors, you know, uh, a musician can use different uh, sound palette to to create like a completely different feeling, even if it's the same exact beat. So. So that, you know, that, that, that all kind of came to me in in like in like five minutes. You know all that stuff, and you know, like while I was like playing, I'm like, oh my god, that would be all, and that would be awesome, and that would be awesome, and I quickly like scribbled down the ugliest sketch that you've ever seen. I'm not, but very much not a visual artist. I cannot, you know, draw or paint to save my life, but. Um, I did. I actually did it in uh, Microsoft Paint with like just the lines, oh, so that the lines would be straight because I can't even draw straight lines. And so I did like in Microsoft Paint, just like a simple box with like the you know the uh, circles for the knobs and like a square, you know, and and like mm -hmm. arrows pointing at different elements and little descriptions of like what I wanted it to do when you do different things. And um, and then once I had once I had. Um, uh, this uh, I remember. I sent it to my good friend um, Fernando Perdomo. He's a he's a really good friend of mine. He actually recorded my album uh, uh, this is a while back in 2008. I recorded uh, an album of original music, and he was my producer and my recording, um, you know, uh, my recording technician. And he um, and so he's like he's super into the music world. He's uh, he's a, he's an amazing artist. Um, you guys should check him out, Fernando Perdomo. But um, he's worked with like everybody. Nowadays, he's kind of like semi-famous, you know, but uh, back then, and we grew up like two houses apart, so like we knew each other. Mm -hmm. And originally, the name I had was uh, was Drummer Pal. 
you know, that was the name I had. And I had it like written on it and I sent it to him. He's like, drummer, pal, beat buddy. Beat buddy. <laughs> All right. There we and go. Yeah, like, okay, well, that, that sounds a little better. And we didn't, neither of us actually realize that in some parts of the internet, they consider beat buddy to be a lewd term, like you're beating your buddy. You know, it's a, a term for masturbation. <laughs> and I had no idea. Yeah, I, I had no idea. And like to this day, we keep on getting, you know, like on our on our ads online, you know, we get like some random, you know, wise ass, you know, just saying, oh, beat buddy, you know, like making a little joke about, you know, uh, <laughs> about that. So yeah, I had no idea. I guess maybe I was just raised innocent, but uh, I didn't realize that that was the, uh, that that could have been a reference but um so yeah so as far as to answer your original question um you know i had the uh i had the idea of the general features and the functions that i wanted it to have and then i didn't know what was possible mm -hmm. i didn't know what this would cost right because you could make the greatest product in the world but if it costs too much money, no one's going to buy it. Right. So, uh, so what I did is I just designed, you know, like kind of my idealized version of it. And then I started sending it around to, I, I searched for, um, uh, you know, cause I was just, you know, some random guy. I didn't have like, you know, a engineering company or anything like that. Um, so I sent it to, uh, the, the sketch I sent it to, I, I, I Googled, um, uh, electronic product development mm -hmm. and I found a lot of uh, different uh, companies that promised to take your idea from sketch to production that, that's like their advertising and there are a lot of them there's actually you know if you google this you'll see you know like hundreds of these companies sure. and so I had no idea who to pick you know I didn't know who was good you know I'm not an engineer so I don't know you know you know if you know what you're talking about or if you don't so in the beginning, I made the classic mistake that every newcomer makes, and I went with the cheapest option. Right. And, and you know, that's it's kind of like you know obvious in retrospect, but you know, I guess my thinking at the time was if I can't really tell the difference between these guys, then I might as well spend less money. <laughs> and uh, that turned out to be a mistake. Um, I pretty much wasted nine months of my time and ended up with nothing. You know, just some mm -hmm. like bad renders and i realized after the guy kept on giving me the you know extending the deadlines extending the deadlines and just nothing was really happening i was like okay i'm giving up on this person and i gotta you know start from scratch and and find the next you know best option and i realized that probably the best option and the thing is is that the the range of of the amount that it was going to cost what they quoted me it was literally the cheapest was one tenth of the most expensive. So that was that was the range. It was an right. enormous range. And I was like, well, why would these people, you know, charge 10 times more than that person? And you know, why do the you know these other people who are like only five times more, you know, are they better than the 10 times more or are they worse? You know, I mean, I, you know, like how do you know? So I realized that instead of looking at the price, the best thing to do would be to look at the proposal that they sent me. So when you ask them for, you know, a quote, what they do is they send you back a proposal, which is they're like, okay, we can do this and this is how we're going to do it. And, um, and most of the companies, they pretty much kind of just regurgitated what I asked them to do. They'll be like, they like, you know, posted screenshots of like what I sent them and they're like, we're going to do this and it's going to take us X number of months and it'll cost X number of dollars and that's it, right? The the company I ended up choosing, uh, and I still use them to this day for uh, for some of our projects, uh, they gave me a broken down um, uh, like plan where they said, you know, there's this is the electronic engineering component and these are the, all the sub steps that we need and these are the types of professionals we need to accomplish it and this is how many hours we estimate each sub step is going to take. This is the mechanical engineering. We need to hire, you know, this kind of person for to do this and this is how long we think this will take and then we have to verify that and, and you know, this is the software component and they had it like, it was like a five page proposal and it was very detailed and I could see that they had a semblance of a plan, right? They had a real, a real roadmap of getting to a functional product, which right. most of the other companies did not. Some of the other companies had a little bit, uh, you know, similar, but these guys were by far the most detailed. And so I thought, and they weren't the most expensive either. They were, 
Um, you know, they were probably in the, they were like a little bit less than half the cost of the most expensive ones. So they, so around like th around four times the cost of the cheapest guy, but, but, you know, around 40% of the price of the most expensive guy. So they weren't, they were, you know, less than half the cost of, of the most expensive person, but they, but they, um, but they seemed like they knew what they were talking about. They had by far the most detailed proposal. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, and of course, before I started it, I asked them, well, what do you guys estimate that this thing is going to cost to build? And they gave me, you know, they said, oh, well, these are the components we're going to use. And um, and so we estimate it's going to, you know, cost X number of dollars, which, you know, I, at the time it was it was like in the range of what I thought I could sell it for. Uh, it ended up, you know, it was I was actually very lucky because it, it was really interesting uh, just to skip a little bit ahead in the story is that once we finished the engineering and I went to manufacturers to get quotes, I got a, a similar kind of dynamic as from the engineering companies. Like some manufacturers were like, it wasn't 10 times, but it was like four times the price of the cheapest manufacturer, you know? And I was like, why is there such a range? It doesn't make any sense. And uh, it, it's, it's incredible, but like, uh, you know, that there is such a range, but it sure. was, it was, um, it was, there was no guarantee. A, there was definitely a huge element of risk, uh, uh, you know, just going into the project because you really don't know what you're going to end up with at the end because you're building something brand new. You could hire a really good engineer and they could say, oh, you know, you know, the project can do it with this component, that component, that component. If we add all these components together, this is what it's going to cost to build. And it's usually around this amount for your, for assembly. So they can give you like kind of like a ballpark estimate, but very often things change along the way. And you suddenly you go from, you know, from something that you thought was going to cost you, you know, a certain amount to something that's going to cost you twice as much. And then you kind of have to decide, okay, well, are people going to spend that much to, for this thing? Or do I need to improve it to, for, to justify them spending that much, okay. you know? So, so that, that was, it was kind of like a, a process. Sure. Um, and uh, it, it was definitely not a risk-free process because, uh, you know, and that was something I learned kind of the hard way going through it that, that, you know, even if the engineers sound like they know what they're talking, and even if they do know what they're talking about, they don't know what they don't know. And so anytime you develop any new product, you are entering risky territory that you may not come out the other side with what you expected, mm -hmm. but you just have to accept that risk mm -hmm. and try to minimize it as much as possible by hiring as knowledgeable possible as, as, as knowledgeable as possible people. Right. Mm -hmm. But, but um, at the end of the day, every business venture is a gamble and you have to, you have to try to skew the odds in your favor as much as possible by doing things uh, like as uh, you know, by, by crossing your T's and dotting your I's and all that stuff and uh, hiring the right people, but it's never risk free. And you just kind of have to roll with the uh, with the punches and, and roll with the changes to the project. And I seen I've seen this in every one of my products that I've I've developed. I saw it in, uh, you know, in the uh, MIDI Maestro, I saw it in the Eros, you know, the Eros was originally going to be something very different than when, what it ended up being. And it was this entire process of, you know, saying, Oh, well, we didn't realize that this had this limitation. And that had that limitation, we have to switch out the component, but wait, that raises the price significantly now, and people aren't going to pay for something that expensive. So we need to make it more awesome to justify that price. You know, so it was kind of like a lot of that, and it, it, there's a lot of like going back and kind of revising your plans. So it's 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 a it's a very dynamic process um, developing products, and uh, yeah. So I, I don't know if that's a helpful answer. Oh, uh, no, it's, no, it's but quite detailed. It, it, that is the that is the reality of developing products. It's it's you know people think it's like oh you have the idea it's crystal clear how it's going to look and how it's going to work in your head and you give it to the engineers and they make it and the manuf they design it and then the manufacturers manufacture it and it costs exactly what you thought it would and everything but no it's every step of the way you kind of have to like 
uh, reanalyze and revamp your plans sure. because you know because you find out a whole bunch of things that you didn't know in the beginning when you made your plans and you kind of have to evolve as right. it goes. Well, it sounds. I mean, it sounds like this. What, the the process of all of this mirrors songwriting and recording in some ways. Yes. You start out with an idea, yes. right? You find yes. a producer. The producer's crap. You have to go look for a different producer. Exactly. He's not part of what you thought he was going to be. Then you go to the yeah. third one. Yeah. And then oh wait, but edit the song. Okay, but rearrange it. So on and so forth. And actually, that's something I want to talk to you about. Sure. Um, so I'm a keyboard player. Yes. I play Hammond organ. I play guitar. That's what I'm sort of my my thing. Apparently, I didn't realize it was my thing, but it is. And the thing about the Beat Buddy that for me is really cool is that one, it's got very realistic sounds. Mm. So as opposed to previous drum machines or drum looper style um, pieces of gear that always sounded like I was going into a bad '80s nightclub, right? <laughs> right. Mm. And I'm hauling my Hammond organ into a venue. And I hit that because maybe it's just me and say a bass player and something else. And then you hear this horribly compressed paper thin, yeah. no dynamics, nothing. Um, so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, how you chose the sound samples that you did. I know there's some things that you can go into, other things are proprietary and you can't. So I totally get that. Yeah. But yeah. you have a couple of things on there. You've got um, 64, what is it? It's higher polyphony that you have now, yeah. right? And, you've got this accent option that I think is really cool because yeah. for Hammond organ on the SK one keyboards and the SK twos, um, they mirror things like key click and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, tone module. There's all these things that they have mirrored into the authenticity of the original instrument. Mm -hmm. And this is the first, not just the first pedal, but the first, beat making component in general that I've found mm -hmm. that also sort of honors the authenticity of the instrument. So right. could you take us through what your thought process was on that? Mm -hmm. And also I think how you feel that helps the songwriter. Right, so when we started it, um, I knew that that the quality of the, of the beats, the quality of the sound, the sound quality, right, is was going to be critical. You know, I mean, you can make a really clever, uh, you know, thing that functions really well, but if it doesn't sound good, no one's going to use it because, you know, music is is really about emotion. It's about passion. And when you hear something that sounds great, it makes you feel great. If you hear something that sounds like crap, it makes you feel like crap, even if it's clever, right? Yeah. So, uh, so I knew that it was a make it or break it kind of uh, scenario. And I, I'm very lucky uh, that I was introduced to a local uh, drummer and producer in Miami. His name is Goran Rista. And we've, we've become very good friends over the years. And he is, uh, I work with him very closely on making these beats. And he's, he's the guy who makes, so uh, I'm sure Scott and you guys know, um, that uh, we also have an online, uh, uh, you know, library that we sell beats, uh, professionally made stuff, mm -hmm. and that is all stuff that is produced by Goran, the guy who made the original beats on the Beat Buddy, and you know, we've been producing consistently this, you know, premium content as we call it, um, for people to purchase and download, and um, we developed a system to make it much more realistic and there's it, the and it, we we've talked about this publicly so it's not really most of it's not uh not you know secret but um uh i won't tell you the secret parts of course you of know course. <laughs> but yeah but but the the way we've done it the way we did it and i give goran a huge amount of credit for this because he is uh he's one of these like uh, he's one of these divas, and I say that in the in the best possible way, you know, like so, someone who's extremely picky about like the sound quality. He's like a perfectionist, and so uh, uh, you know, we we work together, him, me, and the engineers, uh, the engineering team, to develop a system which would make the beat sound as realistic as possible. Because you have the the issue with with most drum machines is that drum machines are MIDI based, right? So for, right. you know, for the, for anyone in the audience who doesn't know, uh, you know, MIDI is kind of like the, like the, the, um, 
electri- like it's like the music notation, right? Mm-hmm. And it, what it does is pretty much you know uh, uh, electronic signals that that tell the machine when to trigger actual sound samples, which is what you hear. So, and the advantage of using MIDI and why drum machines use it is so that you could do things like tempo changes uh, very easily because if you have if you take like let's say just an audio recording of drums and then you try to uh, you know to stretch it to slow it down right first it's going to you know change the pitch right now they have some uh, nowadays they have some you know software which could you know adjust the pitch but you're losing when you're stretching it out you're losing all that information in between as it's it's like taking a picture and blowing it up it gets pixelated because you don't right. have those that that the between the pixel pixels mm-hmm. uh, you know in, and that's why it looks a lot less clear so the same thing happens when you stretch music and so that's why drum machines use MIDI because with MIDI you you know it just stretches the electronic notes and so it just triggers those sound samples further apart rather than taking the sound samples themselves and stretching them so that's why drum machines use MIDI uh, now the problem with MIDI is that it most drum machines the reason they sound bad is they don't capture a lot of the different elements of of uh of the sound so for example when a drummer plays um when a drummer plays you know let's let's say a drum roll on the snare right and it's just a a repeating note right just like really quick right a standard drum machine is just going to see that same note repeating a whole bunch of times and it'll play the same sound sample a bunch of times right now that makes it sound kind of like a machine gun right now in real life, when a drummer is doing a drum roll, he never actually strikes the head of the snare at the exact same way. You know, there's these little variations as the as the tip of his drum of his drumstick are, is hitting the snare, which creates little variations in the sound. So, for example, one hit might sound like tick, and one may sound like tuck, and another would sound like tuck. You know, it's like very very small differences in the sound samples. Now, what we did is we created a system which we called round robin playback. So we have multiple uh, recordings of that drum, of that snare hit, uh, all assigned to the same uh, instrument in the drum kit, you know, the snare, for example. So we don't just have one sound assigned to the snare. We have, you know, let's say, for example, three sounds. And if the if the beat buddy sees that there's the same note in a row, it'll pick the sound samples randomly from the choice. So it'll it, it'll sound much more natural, like a real drummer is playing, because uh, okay. it's actually varying. It's varying which samples it's playing for this particular instrument. So it's not the same sample over and over and over, which sounds mechanical. Your ear, you don't know why it sounds like a robot. But that's why that's one of the reasons it sounds like a robot. You just you hear the your your brain is like that just sounds unnatural. You don't know why it sounds unnatural because no drummer actually is even physically able to play like that it, because you know you you know the way your hands move you know it's impossible to hit it the same angle always. So that's one thing we did. Another thing we did was uh, we created um, uh, dynamic layers. Right. And what that means is a drum will sound very different if you hear uh, now uh, current drum machines. Right. What they have, they have dynamic layers. But usually most drum machines, what they do is if if it sees the note has the information because MIDI notes, they have the timing of where it's supposed to play. They also have the velocity, which is how hard it's supposed to be played. So if you see if a MIDI, most drum machines, when they see, you know, like a velocity, you know, go, let's say from, you know, zero to a hundred, generally what they do is they just raise the volume. And it's, Ah. it's, that doesn't sound natural because when a drummer plays something lightly, like if he hits the snare lightly, it's a very different, um, uh, you know, sound, uh, you know, uh, sound wave, you know, pattern. I guess I don't know what the term for it is. Uh, then if he hits it hard, you know, it's not just that it's louder. It's actually got different uh, resonances. It's got different, uh, different frequencies. Sound palette. So mm-hmm. it's actually a different sound. It's not just the volume turned up or down. 
And a lot of drum machines, they just use volume, which sounds completely robotic and unnatural. I mean, it, it's like you're supposed to be hitting the thing lightly and it just sounds like you're hitting it loud just with the volume down. It's not the same thing. So we, what we did is we created different velocity layers where we recorded you know, the snare being hit light and the snare being hit hard, the slur, you know, all these different layers as you're going up the velocity layer chain uh, so that as, you know, as the beat buddy gets the, the MIDI information of how, what the velocity is for these specific notes, it picks a specific sample from that layer and plays that at the right volume. And of course, each, each uh, layer has its own, has multiple samples so that we could do that round robin playback in case there's a repeating note within the same layer. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's, you know, one of the things. So that, that was, uh, that was a, another thing, really big uh, uh, thing that we did. We've also did something called choke groups where, where if, if it has, um, uh, uh, you know, like if one note is played after another note, you know, depending on what it is, like, for example, like if, you know, the closed hi-hat note is played after the open hi-hat, mm -hmm. it will choke the sound of that open hi-hat so it doesn't continue ringing out. Right. You know, okay. in a real life situation, you know, drummer's playing on the on the hi hat, and then he closes the hi hat. You don't hear that that open hi hat sound anymore because the hi hat is closed. So th these are all programming things we had to do with the engineers, saying if you get a closed hi hat note right after an open hi hat note, you have to mute that open right. hi hat you know sound. So uh, things like that. There are a few other things that we develop uh, beyond that, but those. Um, you know, are you know a good overview of of the types of, of things that we develop to make it sound as natural as possible. Well, the other thing I noticed that you guys have is you have the ability to set your drum fills in a certain way. Is that mm -hmm. is that correct? I read it's called fill finessing, but I don't know if that's the actual term for uh, it. But where you can start it like. I think it's probably more like humanizing, where it begins uh -huh. either an eighth note or a quarter quarter. Like you can set where it's going to go uh -huh. after you for smoother transitions. Do you know what I'm talking right. about? Um, I think I know what, what you're referring to. So so there's uh, so the way the beat buddy works is here. Just to give an example, um, I'll, I'll actually use the beat buddy and, here. And don't worry, by the way, folks. If uh, you know if you stay tuned to the the, the pedal guy channel on YouTube, we'll definitely cover this because yeah. this is a lot of information to take in, and it's uh, yeah. It but it's 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 ingenious stuff and really does talk about the innovation behind the product. It's not just a a drum machine. This thing. This is like having a drummer. It really you know, is. This is a songwriting tool, and as a composer yeah. and as a keyboard player, I can tell you that it has huge benefits. So. Absolutely. So, David, sorry to interrupt. Go right ahead. Yeah, no. uh, I, I, I never mind being interrupted with compliments. <laughs> so, not so bad. Uh, so yeah. So uh, I, to, to answer, I'm not sure if this is a, what you're referring to, but, but with the beat buddy, when you do, oh, I keep on doing it. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's the wrong way. Uh, so when you do, as you see, you see the visual metronome moving right. across across there, and um, when you hit the fill, it, it, the fill was, will start whenever you press the pedal. So if you, yes. you know, if you press it, you know, let's say here one second. In the beginning, it does it all the way through, like it'll be a four, you know, a four note fill. But if you do it at the end, it'll just do it for that ending part, and then it'll right. end. So you could adjust how um how long the fills are which is a very musical thing because sometimes a drummer will do a crazy long fill and sometimes he'll do just a little fill you know right. and so it's nice to have that capability at the tap of your foot to decide so even if, if it's the same fill that you're playing it could sound completely different because of when it starts so uh so that's that's that but what we in the settings, which is I think what you're talking about, is you could adjust in the settings, and we have, uh, and I know you covered this on your channel, Scott. But uh, you know, if you these two knobs are actually like buttons, you could besides turning them, you could press them down, and now you have you know the setting, oh, yeah. right. you know, and you, you could uh, adjust a whole bunch of things the way it works. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you could adjust here, and and let me go into it if and. Uh, uh, is the here? Let me see if you could actually see it. The Q fill period is that what you're you're referring to? I think so. Yeah, because that's to me like I look at that as making it much more human. 
Right. Um, so there's there's one issue that that uh, uh, people have is that because obviously you know you're pressing a pedal, and when you press the pedal, it kind of interrupts the beat that was playing. So it so you know sometimes that can that can cause like slight little like weird you know, timing issues as it switches from the main beat to the fill. Mm -hmm. So that cue fill period is a way for you to decide you want it, you have different options. Um, uh, you could either do it immediately, which is the def oh, there, I keep on doing it the wrong way. You could either do it immediately, you know, the next half beat, the next beat, or in the next measure. And that, and if you cue it at those times, then it comes in, usually when it changes on the beat, there is no weird timing thing because mm -hmm. you know, that how the, the beats are structured. So it will it will remove that uh, you know that element. But most people really we, you know we've we've um, because the beat buddy is an updatable device, you know, we come out with new firmware updates to it uh, <clears throat> periodically. In fact, we are about to release a new one uh, hopefully in the next uh, in the next week or two. Mm -hmm. Just cross we're, we're doing our testing now. Um, if everything works out, it, it'll be in the next week or two. We, and it'll have a whole bunch of new improvements. So because uh, the Beat Buddy is an updatable device, you know, it's a, a we can improve it over time. A lot. Uh, we we listen to. We have a very active forum on uh, singular singularsound.com. Yes, we do. Very <laughs> yes. and um, very passionate. And, <laughs> yes, very passionate. Yeah, and and it's both good and and bad. You know, but I love it. I mean, we get Embrace a lot it of. All. Yeah, because the thing is, is that. You know, I actually, I, you know, as as you said, as you've, as I see you visited the forum, right? Because oh, yeah. because you've seen it. Um, there are people who are who get very upset at us because you know we are missing the one little feature that would make our product perfect, but without it, it's complete and utter garbage, right? You know, that's that's what they say, and and I love hearing from people like that because it's it's a way for us to improve our products sure uh, you know a lot of the big companies and i think this is a big advantage for us uh, a lot of the big companies who you know make pedals and i'm not going to name names but a well, lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that here, so yeah uh -huh. so, yeah so a lot of big companies they release a product and as far as they're concerned once it's out in the wild you know that's the end of it they like will never do an update to it, even if it's got something critical wrong with it, um, sure. you know, but uh, we kind of see it the opposite way. You know, we see it when we release a product that's kind of like that's that's the beginning of the road, you know, mm -hmm. because we design the best possible product we can. But we know that that uh, there's many different musicians out there who use our products in many different ways, ways that we haven't even imagined using it ourselves. And uh, and so we listen to them. Usually, they write very passionate posts on our forum, and and then if it makes sense to us, and if it's possible, and if enough people agree with the, whoever's writing, you know, the suggestions, then we'll actually adjust it. Uh, and and in the next update, we'll we'll take their suggestions to heart and 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 uh, improve it in that way. So mm -hmm. that's uh, the feature that I just showed you. The setting that I just showed you on the Beat Buddy. Um, that came from one of the suggestions from our from one of our uh, fans on you know uh, on uh, on the forum because it, to us we couldn't even hear the difference you know like it happened so because you'd have to press the pedal at exactly the wrong time in right. order for you to hear it and like ninety nine percent of the time you won't even notice it but there are some people who have much better ears than than I do you know and. Uh, and you know they, you know, and to them it's really important, and it's the difference between a amazing product and a product that is, you know, not so amazing or at times horrible, you know, because it, it throws them off that little change in the beat. So, sure. so I realize, you know, for people like this, it's very important to uh, have a setting like that. And you know, and our engineers are like, you know, that's not such a big deal to build. So I'm like, okay, well, why not? You know, if it's not so difficult to build and uh, you know, it's very important to some people, then then we'll build it. And and that's always the process that we go through is like, mm -hmm. you know, when we see, because we, as you've seen on our forum, we have many, many, many suggestions and many requests. And some people 
put a lot of effort into it. And I, I really appreciate it. You know, like some people even like post like whole charts of like, and they want to redesign our own products from scratch. <laughs> where, where yeah. we, like pretty much create a brand new product in their design. And so we always have to balance, um, you know, is the idea a good idea? Do other people agree? How many people is this important to? And how difficult is it to do? And once we we take all of those things into account, then we uh, then we decide whether or not we're actually going to, uh, you know, pursue that and, and create that feature or make that improvement. We, we actually have a question from a viewer right now. Yeah. Uh, there's two questions. One, I'll read what he wrote, and then I have a question So on top of that, which is um, he's writing, uh, this is Steven from Florida, is writing, can you do a global tuning change so the drums are in tune with the music? Can you change Maybe. tuning on the fly to follow a song's change? That's his question. My question to follow that is actually, um, would you ever have guest drummers do sample packs for you? Go. That's a great idea. <laughs> so, um, well, to answer the first question, a tuning a tuning change is very interesting. Uh, that is, this is actually congratulations. Uh, what's his name again? Stephen. Stephen from Florida, my home state. I'm actually based in Miami. So, what's up, fellow Floridian? Um, <laughs> you're both Florida men, and <laughs> and all that implies. But. Um, uh, so tuning change is a very interesting one. That's actually the first time I've ever heard of that request. Hey, because I'm Steven, that's a, a, yeah, at the gear you hear. Um, that's, uh, that, that's the first time anyone's ever actually asked for that. So it is an interesting idea. Um, I would have, I don't know how easy it would be to do. Probably not that difficult, not that easy with the current hardware of the beat buddy, because it would take sound processing. Um, you know, it's not, um, uh, there are certain things that the beat buddy hardware is optimized to do and changing the sound isn't, isn't in its, uh, in its, uh, hardware capabilities, uh, in, in its, uh, strong hardware capabilities, because it's not meant for that. It's not meant to be an effect pedal. It's meant to be kind of like a, like an advanced, you know, MIDI player is what, is what it does. So off the top of my head probably won't do the the um, the tuning changes but if other people chime in and say this would be you know an amazing thing to do and would really make the make a difference and as far as taking this product to the next level <laughs> you would consider it when we're coming out with a, a sequel beat buddy to uh, uh, to give it that capability well oh, then I hear a petition coming. <laughs> Would you, no, no, no. Would you consider doing so with the knobs, right? With the yeah. control knobs, would you consider yeah. doing sort of a, a a more in depth menu where you could tune individual drums? So tuning the snare, tuning the oh, tom, tuning the, right? I, so if you can't do a global tuning change on the fly, could you pre tune it to your personal specifications before you start creating your pattern? Um. I wonder how many people would actually use it. I mean, it's a great idea, and I think there's it's two. Cool. There's one here yeah. and one in Florida. Okay, okay. 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 <laughs> um, it's a bi-coastal idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a very cool idea. I, I will. I will. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's a very cool idea. I will. I will. Uh, I will say that. Um, I'd have to, I wouldn't, I definitely am not going to give any sort of, uh, commitment at this right, point. Of course, of course. I, I don't know if one, if it's even possible with mm -hmm. the current hardware mm -hmm. to how difficult it would be, you know, from a programming perspective, from a software perspective and, uh, and three, I don't know how many other than you two guys, you know, would actually want to do this. So those are, you know, those are things that I would have to, you know, seriously investigate before we actually pursued it. So, so, Steven, so Steven, I, I, yeah, uh, okay, go ahead. No, go ahead. Steven has just commented. He's clearly watching this in real time, which is great. We're, yeah. we love it when people join in and participate. We've yeah. got Sonia on YouTube talking about how great singular sound is, and we'll go through oh, her comments you. as well. But Steve, Stephen has just given up the ghost. Um, Stephen, it looks like he is some sort. Of, it's clear that from I, I went to his Facebook page. He's okay. clear he's a very talented drummer. He's got extensive kits um, and all these amazing percussion mm -hmm. instruments and things. But um, it also seems that he knows a fair bit about programming because now he's. Oh, cool. <laughs> so you may want to talk to us after the show. Yeah, yeah. And see if you 
put your heads together because uh, he's you know, maybe he's Steven there are ways to code it um, that might yes. work. So he's, okay. he seems to be more in touch than even I realized. But okay, yeah. cool. Well, Stephen, uh, let me know what your let me know your thoughts. I always love to hear ideas. Yeah, we've got um, Sonia saying that she loves the Beat Buddy, and she's now at the point getting more in depth with the pedal after two plus years and oh, adding no. to it. Um, she says, I'm really glad that Singular Sound keeps updating the pedal. I do recommend that pedal to all my friends. This is Thank not you. an advertisement. This is just Sonia on YouTube. Um, you. yeah. she, <laughs> I want to get the looper pedal due to the support by Singular Sound. And then Luis says, mm -hmm. hi, folks. I love my B -B Beat Buddy. Can you please tell us about Beat Buddy Manager new versions? So another yeah. question. Got. That that's is, a good that's question. a commonly seen question. Yes, that's a that's a very common question. So, the Beat Buddy Manager has been um, a, a challenge for us, to put it mildly. Uh, you know, I would say it's it's definitely you know because the original idea of the Beat Buddy is that it is it works right out of the box, and you know you can use it. You don't need a plug in your computer. You know you don't need to. Uh, you know, it's it's good for the technophobes out there, the people who you know who are not uh, technologically advanced. Exactly. Um, you know, and 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 that it's been working amazing for that. Um, I, I, I one of my favorite emails that I ever got was from a uh, a, uh, a gentleman who said told me that he was seventy seven years old and he hadn't played guitar in thirty years. Hmm. And but when he saw the beat buddy, he was so inspired to pick up his guitar again. And now it's like one of the great joys of his life. And, you know, so it was it was incredible. And and he told me, you know, the reason that that it inspired him is because of how simple it was. It was just, you know, plug and play a tap, a double tap, a hold. That's all you need to do. And you have live sounding drums right there. Um, but I never wanted it to be, you know, just to keep it in that, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, to pigeonhole it, so to speak. I wanted to make it as powerful as possible and as customizable as possible so that you could create your own beats, uh, download other people's beats, buy professionally made beats, uh, you know, make your own beats and put it on there. And, uh, and that was always the vision. And to accomplish that, we created the software, the Beat Buddy Manager, uh, and it, you know, it, it works, but it has always had a, you know, a few issues with it, uh, you know, some very odd bugs, and and uh, I think that you know, originally my engineers, the original engineers who built it, uh, they built it basing it on the. Um, on the uh, uh, the uh, what you might call it the um, the firmware of the, of the hardware product, so that there's there's kind of like a virtual version of the Beat Buddy inside the Beat Buddy Manager, and that choice to base it on that caused us a whole bunch of problems down the road because that particular programming language is better best used for hardware and not so much for software, and that's why these. Uh, you know, it had the, some of the bugs have been so difficult to uh, work out. Now, that being said, we haven't given up on it and we've been working on it actually for uh, at this point. Um, you know, we had a full time developer who was working on it for the past six months and just this was her one, you know, her sole focus. Unfortunately, we just lost her. Uh, she went into an artificial intelligence company, you know, and we couldn't compete with the prices that they pay, uh, you know. Um, so we lost her and now we're looking for a new developer, but don't panic because we do have uh, two other developers who are working on this project as well. They, you know, were, uh, they took over from her as she was leaving. Um, so we are making a lot of progress and I would always love to say, oh, we expect it to be out at this date. Mm -hmm. Every time I say that, I'm always wrong. And I always look horrible and everyone hates me. And they're like, oh, you said that it would be out by this time. And it's way beyond that time. Right. And I'm like, well, you know, I mean, all I could tell you is what the engineers tell me. I, you know, I'm not the one, you know, shuffling the ones and zeros around. So, you know, <laughs> it's, right. you know, um, so I, I would love to give a date, but mm -hmm. can't because I know it's going to bite me in the ass no matter what date I give. <laughs> right. Of course. 
So I'm not going to. I will say that we seem to be right at the edge there of releasing something new mm -hmm. and uh, you know something with a lot of improvements, a lot of uh, a lot of bug fixes, and one very big feature improvement uh, that uh, I'm you know I've talked in the, on the forum in the past uh, something called autopilot. And um, I don't know if have you guys heard of uh, this upcoming feature? Uh, not particularly. Um, okay, so let me tell you what the next the next big evolution in the Beat Buddy is going to be, and it's been waiting on the new Beat Buddy manager for this. Um, uh, the next, so one of the one of the big issues with the Beat Buddy is uh you know, because there's different ways of using the beat buddy right there's the standard way of you know it's all manual you trigger it right but the thing is is that some people like playing specific a lot of people like playing specific cover songs right so if you want to play uh you know a famous song you know let's say comfortably numb by pink floyd you know as you can tell mm -hmm. i'm a big pink floyd fan right yeah i kind of figured yeah so um so if you want to play comfortably numb, you know, we have that song in the premium library that you could download the beats for it, and it'll be the exact beats that they played on the album, and it'll be on your beat buddy, and it sounds amazing. The issue is if you want it to sound exactly like the song, it's not just a simple verse chorus type of structure. It's got like 12 different sections. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how they wrote the song. Now, if you have a song with 12 different parts, you need to know when to transition on the beat buddy from part one to two to three to four all the way down. Yes. And which means that you need to know the drum part of the song very, very well in order to know when to transition that. And most guitarists don't know that. You know, I'm a guitarist. I don't I don't pay attention to the drums, you know, that closely. I, I pay attention to what I'm playing. You know, I pay attention to my guitar, to my singing, because that's, you know, that's what I'm focused on. So mm -hmm. It's difficult for a guitarist to, you know, to know exactly when to make those transitions. Now, some people on the forum, our amazing forum with all our amazing fans, right? What they've done, <laughs> is they've, uh, and, and I, I, I do not mean that sarcastically. I really do mean that uh, genuinely. I really do love, uh, you know, even with all the, the the grief that they give us. Uh, you know, I, I, I love it. I love all the, I love all the, you know, the uh, criticism. I love the compliments. I love it all. I love it that they're involved, you know, because sure. I would rather someone screaming that they hate me than say nothing, you know, that I think being ignored is the worst. So, you know, if, if people are passionate about you, even if they're passionate in a negative sense, that means that they care and they want you to get better. So mm -hmm. I think that, so, uh, so I do mean that genuinely. Um, so on, on the forum, uh, uh, there have been, uh, people have posted a huge amount of beats and drum sets that you could download for free and put it on your beat buddy through the beat buddy manager. And one kind of category of, of beats that people have made is what they call one press play or OPP. They have, they've created this whole lexicon, you know, of like, of like, you know, acronyms for, for all the different types of, of beats that they've made. It, it gets pretty deep. I mean, it, it's pretty, it's pretty impressive. Of what what they've done, and, and this is all you know our our customers. This is not us uh, who have created this stuff. And the one press play songs, pretty much what it is, is it's just a single MIDI file, and it's just one huge MIDI file that you can put on your beat buddy, and you just tap the beat buddy to start it, and it plays the song all the way through from beginning to end. Right, and and, and that's great. Uh, you know, if you're playing a specific song in a exactly this way every single time, you know, then you don't have to worry about, you know, when to do that transition, when to press a fill, all that stuff. The downside of that is that it's pretty much having a backing track. I mean, I, I you know, I never really understood. I'm like, why don't you just, you know, play that track on your iPhone and, and you could just play a lot of you know what's 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 the point of having a hands-free drum machine if you're not even going to interact with it? Um, so I so what we're, de we're we're developing is a system we're calling autopilot, mm -hmm. which is the best of both worlds. And what it's going to do is through the Beat Buddy Manager, and which is why it's been taking us so long to release a new Beat Buddy Manager because we're building this feature into it, it on top of all the other bugs. Oh, oh, by the way, before I get into autopilot, I should say that we made the manager open source. 
So if there's any computer programmers out there who uh, are interested in, in, uh, in working on it, you're more than welcome to help us <laughs> fix all those bugs and make it, you know, um, you know, 10 times better. It's all posted, you know, uh, publicly. You could look at the source code. So the BeatBuddy Manager is open source. Uh, we welcome any help that, um, that anyone wants to give us uh, with that. But I mean, we are working on it internally as well. Um, but the main the main feature that we're working on now, which is what's been delaying a new version of the BeatBuddy Manager for so long, is this feature called Autopilot. And what that does is through the BeatBuddy Manager, you can set how many times each uh, section of the song is played for. Okay. Before automatically gets changed to the next section so okay. you can have your 12 section song sure. and it'll automatically go at the right time to the next section but because there's still separate sections you're able to interrupt it and let's say you want to do the solo for twice as long you know because you're really getting into the solo you could tap the pedal and do a drum fill and then instead of going on to the next section it'll repeat that section oh that's oh, really that's cool, cool. So That's you could really cool. Because I, you know, when you were describing it, I was thinking, okay, well, we've seen that with the Trio Plus, right? Um, but no, that's not how the Trio Plus works. Right. Um, by the way, to speak to that whole, you know, thing about, um, well, two things. One, uh, when that you said that's like in a couple of weeks, that's coming out, right? That the update's which, coming out. Which, which update? The the autopilot update for the for the. B2. I said I said very strongly, I'm not giving a date on that. <laughs> oh, I'm not giving a date. Okay, so Derek. Uh, yeah. There's your yeah. there's your answer, Derek. Your answer um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I am honestly glad. hoping that it will be a couple of weeks, but I am promising. Uh, I will say that the that there will be a new Beat Buddy firmware coming out. Okay, that's it. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I honestly believe in the next two weeks. Okay, uh, you know, and I will be surprised if it's. I'm, I'm not saying it's impossible because God knows I've seen the, you know software delays are, you know extremely common unfortunately but um <laughs> but, but we are we're, i i think that we're like practically done with the new version of the beat buddy firmware mm -hmm. and which fixes a few bugs and it uh creates a few new uh, it give a few more setting options uh to make things more flexible uh, some fixes with the midi compatibility uh you know we'll have a whole list of course uh you know posted on the forum uh, so I think the the new Beat Buddy firmware should be out in the next two weeks. Uh, the autopilot, I mean, I hope it's out in the next two weeks. It's possible it'll be out, but sure, but probably not. You know, uh, just from just from you know what I've seen in the past, and just like you know uh, how difficult the Beat Buddy Manager, unfortunately, is a bit difficult to work from a programming perspective. And, uh, you know, like things that, you know, you'd be able to fix in other software languages pretty easily because of the software language this was written in, mm -hmm. is, you know, a bit more difficult to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why it's just taking us so long to uh, to come out with a new version. But we are plugging away at it. We've actually we've got two full time developers on it right now. Good. And. And, uh, and uh, you know, we're very hopeful that we'll we'll get a new version out there, you know, relatively soon. Well, That's good. We, we have yep. a, oh we have time for one more question because uh, we've got five minutes left. But one sure. has been on YouTube watching very patiently, and we did promise we would ask you his question. Um, sure. Hi, Juan. Hi, <laughs> Juan. Yeah, everybody wave to Juan from your house. Um, everybody else too. Hello. Hello. Yeah, joining us. Um, is the Beat Buddy version two in the works? He says, I like the Digitech S drum drum pads concept. Any idea how something similar could be accomplished with the Beat Buddy? Question mark. Yeah, so that's something we've been thinking about a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, we are planning on making a Beat Buddy two. Um, we are still in the early stages of it. So uh, I couldn't tell you when it's coming out. Um, 100% not coming out this year, I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So you can exhale now. Yes, you, you exactly. Can, but you can, you, you can trigger sounds yeah. from the MIDI Maestro, you could. but you can watch this, you can watch this Friday, I'll be doing a video yeah. on it, so shameless yeah. plug, shameless plug. And there you yeah. go, yeah. Subscribe, like, you know. Subscribe! There you go, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, to, but to answer to answer the question, uh, we have looked at the Strum. Uh, it's uh, very innovative. I like it. I like the way they do that. 
uh, I, I totally see that the, you know, obviously the strum has its limitations as well as the beat buddy and having some of the capabilities of the strum built into a beat buddy too would be extremely powerful and useful. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is something that we are very, very strongly considering. Uh, we do plan on making the Beat Buddy 2 significantly better in many different ways, uh, but what it's going to encompass is still up in the air as of now. So I promise nothing, but mm -hmm. uh, but we but we are planning on on uh, building something. But it is something that we are thinking about, and we see the advantage of having that style of beat composition and and even not necessarily of like of beat composition, even if we don't build something like that, but some way to find the beat that you're looking for, because that's a big challenge. You know, the Beat Buddy has a huge number of beats, but mm -hmm. like if you have a beat in your head and you want to play it, like trying to find that beat to match the one that's in your head is is pretty frustrating because you have to go through and go you know listen right. listen, listen go through the list and you know it's not a it's not a quick process so it is something that we are uh, you know very very uh, interested in solving this problem mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, we may do something along the lines of the strum, you know, even if it's just a search for the beat rather than beat composition. We may do beat composition as well, but uh, it really depends on, um, on you know, what the, uh, the engineering challenges and what the other features we want to build into a Beat Buddy 2 uh, will look like. So, you know, so we have to take all those things into account before mm -hmm. we, we decide uh, you know, whether to include anything specific. Right. I did a video on that last week, actually, because a lot of people wanted to know what are the differences between the Beat Buddy right. uh, and the Strum, um, right. because the two pedals that people have come to know the Pedal Guy Channel for right now <laughs> lately have been the Trio and the the Trio Plus and the uh, and the Strum. So right. I can speak to people who are very avid fans of the product, mm -hmm. and they will mm -hmm. share their opinion ad nauseum, yeah. Um, yeah. and they get very passionate about it. And I love everybody who says it and and all that. Thankfully, mm -hmm. most of them have come to figure out that I'm not Digitech, so that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, because Digitech is where they are, uh, yeah. and uh, not not saying anything good or bad. But I totally get the the community the community spirit mm -hmm. that I think has been fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. So as far as like you know, strum, you you can watch the video if you really want to know the difference between the two pedals. But mm -hmm. it's just been the easiest way to explain it is the strum is a beat creation and Beat Buddy is a beat playback. That's really yep. the, the easiest way to put it. Um, exactly. And they just have to figure out which which is the one for you. Right. Exactly. Or you could be or you could be saucy and you could just, you know, sync them up together because you can do yep. MIDI sync. That's true. <laughs> now if you wanna if you wanna see that yeah. happen, uh, yeah. let us know in the comment section and there you who go. knows that that a video like that might happen. Yeah, yeah. Some guy we do, does, we do those kind of things. Make a video. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we do those kind of things here. That's what the pedal guys are about, yeah? yeah? Exactly. So, all right. Well, on that note, I mean, here's the thing, guys. Everybody is writing in comments, which all look great. So we're going to let Scott, um, after this is wrapped up, Scott will get back to all of you. Yes. I've just committed Scott to like a week's worth of <laughs> communications, but that's okay. Um, so at this point, he loves, we're gonna, he loves. He, yeah, he does. He, does. he, he, loves he loves you all. Know. That's, that's hey, look, that's how I keep my lights on and my doors open. So exactly. as long as they like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. That's oh, I right. love I love it. You just said thank you so much, David. That's yes, amazing. please. Uh, for those of you who are watching, you know, we we can continue to do this as long as we have the fans and everybody's clicking and subscribing to my YouTube channel or to Emiko's Instagram feed or the gear you hear yeah, Facebook page, right. all of that. We singular, we need to hear sound. singular mm -hmm. sound, of course, we need to see all of that. Yeah. So, you know, we, we want to continue to share these kind of groovy, groovy uh, sessions. And the only way we can do it is by uh, getting more subscribers and getting more followers. So uh, I so hope to us, see you soon. But so, not in our homes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> but anyway, a, a huge Follow us online only, please. Yes. yes a, um, huge, a huge thank you to David for taking my, such an amazing amount of time for us. We know you're a very, very busy man. Um, 
Yes, indeed. But, and, and to answer all these questions personally, I, I know that um, the followers are very grateful and are, are very excited and will be lining mm -hmm. up six feet apart when the new, <laughs> <laughs> when the new stuff comes out. Yes. So, six feet. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so thank you so much, everybody, for joining us and stay tuned. Um, the next gear you hear will be in two weeks. Yes. Uh, I can't add. What's today? The 7th? Add 14 days to that. 24. Uh, help. That'll 20, be the 21st. Right. Okay. So <laughs> mark your calendars for the 21st. We'll make an announcement on guests um, before that, but make sure to hit that subscribe button. Turn your notifications on. Like, drop comments, ask questions, and thank you all so much for joining us. See you next time. Absolutely. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, everybody.